understanding the Keycroc modes, files, and folders, this time on Hack 5. Hello and welcome to Hack 5, I'm Darren Kitchen, and on this dose of Technolust, we are going to break down some of the fundamentals of the Keycroc in regards to its modes of operation and the files and directory structure on the U-Disk or USB flash disk as it were. This is going to build on Keycroc 101 where we basically just unboxed the device and got it set up, but we really kind of skipped along just to get you going. And now we're gonna dial it just a little bit back so we understand some of these fundamentals so we can build on these before we start getting into accessing the shell and writing payloads and connecting it to Cloud C2 and things of those nature. So let's just go ahead and dive right in. We have a key croc here. It is connected to our computer. And as you can tell from this blue blinking LED, it is in what we call arming mode. Blue blinking LED, very similar on a packet squirrel or on a shark jack or on a bash bunny, we use that to indicate what in hack five world we call arming mode. Okay, there's two different modes in our realm, right? You have your attack mode and you have your arming mode. So arming mode is what allows you to configure the device. In this case, we configure it over, well, for the most part, we configure it over the USB flash disk. Uh, a device like the Shark Jack, you would configure an arming mode over, you know, connecting to it over the network. Uh, but in this case, we mainly just connect to our uh, key crock over the USB flash disk, and that's how we can configure payloads and configure settings and get our loot. And when I say loot, I really just mean key logs, but that could also be other, you know, other files from other payloads. Uh, and so arming mode is mainly for setup. Now, attack mode, that's when it's actually doing its nefarious bidding, which in this case is mainly key logging and executing payloads when you know a typed pattern is matched. Uh, those are the main functions of attack mode. And unlike other products, this doesn't have a, a switch to switch in between those. Uh, it is an implant. And so by default, when you plug it in, it goes straight into attack mode. To get into arming mode, you take a little, I, I mean, either a paper clip or a uh, SIM card tool, and you reach around back to this little hidden button, this hidden this little hole, and then you just press straight down, and it does like it's doing right now, and it starts blinking blue. Now, to get it from arming mode into attack mode, you have to unplug the device and replug it. There's no you know, function to get it back into a ta uh, attack mode. It goes into attack mode by default on boot because that's what you're going to do when you plant it on your engagement. Uh, and when it's, you know, running in its at attack mode, the LED is going to be off if a keyboard is connected. So there's no, you know, there's nothing to draw attention to it. While we have it in arming mode, we do like to have that blue LED blinking just to know that's where we are. Uh, so with us in arming mode now, Let's go ahead and uh, take a look at some of the files and the directory structure on the USB flash disk that um, happens to have the drive label Keycroc. Uh, and we're gonna either call this the Keycroc's USB flash disk or later on throughout the series, we'll call it the U-Disk. And we're gonna dive into some idiosyncrasies about it and how to most effectively use it. But essentially what happens here is carved out of the Keycroc's eight gigabyte SSD, is a, uh, a, a partition called the U-Disk, and we can take a look at it here, and it is FAT32 formatted, and it's about two gigabytes in size. And we can use this as our main uh, means to you know, exfiltrate documents, to uh, have this storage space that we can present to us, the pen tester, and just makes it easier to get files on and off of the device so we don't have to SSH into it or connect to it over Cloud C2 or any other network means. So that's what this partition is. Uh, and on this U-Disk, we're gonna notice a couple of different files. So let's just go ahead and start off. We already edited this one right here in uh, the previous uh, video, and that is config.txt. Uh, and that's our little bash script that actually begins with a cute little uh, key croc ASCII art, and it's where we set our configurations. So we set our ducky lang, which we'll get to in a bit, as well as our Wi-Fi, which we've already configured, and SSH. Uh, and so you just go ahead and set your variables there, and these get sourced on boot. 
so that uh, your key croc will work as you expect. Uh, the next file we've already talked about is upgrade.html, and this is just a little shortcut which will take you to uh, the website on upgrading your key croc as we've already done and getting it up and going with the latest firmware version. So uh, if you haven't already, please do that because you always want to be running the latest and greatest. Uh, the next is, of course, your version.txt, which again is a file which you can use to check what version your key croc is running. Uh, and then you have your directory. So uh, the docs directory contains a little bit of documentation. Now I say a little bit because it is not the full documentation. It's just a little ASCII file that welcomes you and then gets you, you know, gets you started and has the default settings and LED indications. But it does not contain the the breadth of uh, information that you'll find here in the. Uh, keycroc documentation over at docs.hack5.org. So this is this is a pretty exhaustive document. I, I really implore you to go and check this out. It's about 50 pages worth in these different chapters that will uh, you know you can use to follow along with these videos as well. Uh, it'll teach you all the ins and outs. You'll also find your license agreement uh, and your EULA and things of that nature. Uh, the languages directory is really important. Okay, so languages. Uh, are, is a directory that will host the key map files which we used for both recording and injecting keystrokes. And so I'm just going to come down here to the us.json file and let's just go ahead and open that. I'm going to open it up in Atom um, you know, or whatever your text editor of preference is. I, I kind of like Atom. I'm indifferent. I've, I've, got, I've, I've played with a few but anyway we can, uh, we can read the comments, we can scroll down and see below but essentially what this is doing is this is mapping an alias uh, of a character that we know when we actually you know look at a keyboard and you know we have all of these different characters on here and they may say you know uh, CTRL they may say ALT they may say WIN or any of those uh, these keys right here are just printed on the key and, and that's what we call it. we call it F6 Right? We call this key right here F6, but that doesn't necessarily, you know, the, the computer doesn't see it as F6. The computer sees it as a scan code. And these scan codes, we could spend an entire uh, video talking about the idiosyncrasies of these. Um, but essentially, in fact, if we, we come down to F6, right? Well, in fact, there's Alt F6, there's Alt Shift F6. We can find all of the places where we define the various scan codes. Uh, that use F6, and let me let me actually find the one true F6. Not there we go, F6. So when you press F6 on your keyboard, what you're doing is you're sending these three bytes. Okay, and so what this does is this key map, right? This US.json file is what is mapping the alias, what we know as GUI, which is the Windows key, or the F7 key to these particular. Uh, you know values of scan codes because that's what the keyboard actually sends. When you hit Control Shift Left arrow key, you're actually sending these scan codes. Uh, and so we'll get more into why there's multiple versions of these. You know, left and right uh, modifier keys and things of that nature. But it is important to understand that there are multiple languages because there are multiple different key maps. If you use, if you go to GB, right, for instance, Great Britain. If uh, you were go to go to England. You would find that if you you know hold down I think it's what shift uh, three on a on a keyboard there you're not going to get the like pound sign that we know and love on social media or an octothrope if you will uh, that number or hashtag sign is actually going to be a British pound sterling symbol and it's because keyboards in that country have a key layout or a, a key map that is specific to their country. And different operating systems need to know how to process those. So it's actually on the operating system side where they see that scan code and say like, oh, well, you know, I'm expecting a British keyboard. So instead of putting a pound sign on the screen, I'm going to put a British pound sterling on the, on the screen. And, and I may have that wrong. It may actually be shift four for a dollar sign instead of a pound sign. I don't know. I'm not in England. Um, but it's important to keep this in mind because you'll want to define a key map based on where you are deploying this. So if you are going on an engagement in Germany, you're going to want to set your key map to DE for Deutschland or Germany. And so that right there is actually defined 
in our config.txt file. So if we come back over to our config.txt, you'll see this line right here, ducky lang us. And let me make that a little bit bigger. So this ducky lang us is saying, hey, we're going to use that us language file. So this is important for uh, two major reasons. First of all, it's going to be used for our keystroke injection, which we're going to get to later. It's the quack command. And if you're familiar with a USB rubber ducky or a bash bunny, you may have already used it. And that's going to allow us to send our own arbitrary keystrokes to the target computer. So, so it's important that we define our language for that reason, for keystroke injection. And it's also important that we define this uh, key map file because it's what's going to be used for our loot. So let's just go ahead and jump over to the loot directory. If we look into the loot directory, we have three different files. We have a croc char.log, we have a raw log, and we have a matches. So let's look at this char log for a second here. And uh, let me see if I can increase this font size for you. All right, so this right here is our character log. And you can see as I typed, the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. And you even see me hit exclamation point, And it is inside of these brackets that say shift because it knows that that's what I was holding down when I hit the one key on my keyboard to get a uh, exclamation point. And then you can see me hit enter and all of these other fabulous uh, commands and, or keyboard uh, key, keys. So these keys, they get their mappings from that us.json file because that's what I have defined. So it's important to note. Now, if we take a look at our raw log, we can actually see the, uh, the actual scan code. So remember I mentioned those three bytes? Well, these are the actual bytes that are creating those particular keys when I typed the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. All right, cool. And then, you know, since we're already in loot and we've pretty much at this point covered languages, we can mention that the uh, matches contain, you know, what we typed to trigger a payload. So in this case, I've, I've twice now typed hello, which is defined in this payload here, which executes the payload. All right, uh, so that's languages, that's loot. And then finally, we have our library, our payloads and our tools. So our library, is where we store a bunch of example payloads and we put them on the device from the get-go so that you can learn from example. Uh, so there are additional payloads, obviously, that you'll be able to get from our repositories. And I encourage you to go and check out payloads.hack5.org where you can find links to the various repositories for all of the tools, be it a Bash Bunny or a, a Key Croc or a Shark Jack. Uh, that's the place to go, payloads.hack5.org links them all. And if you want to just get started with what's on device here, we pre-populate it with a bunch of example payloads that kind of show you some of what's possible. So if you want to just, you know, dive right in, take a look at those, you'll figure it out. It's pretty simple, but we're also going to be getting into uh, writing our own and how these example payloads work later on in this series. Now, we also have, uh, of course, our payloads directory. And our payloads directory contains whatever our active payloads are. And it includes this example payload. We saw it in our match. And that is uh, this simple hello world payload where it matches when you type hello and it completes the sentence by saying world uh, exclamation point or bang. That's pretty much it. What this means is if I have a, uh, a payload, say for instance, one of these payloads from my library, and I want to activate it like this one right here that plays Zork. And if you haven't played Zork, you need to go play Zork. You just drag it to your payloads directory, and now it has been activated. So our payload will run when we safely eject <laughs> our, our key croc drive in arming mode, and we unplug it and replug it, and it goes into attack mode. Now it's going to execute that Zork payload, which is really important because, you know, text adventures. All right, um, that's how the payloads directory works. There's a few other minor idiosyncrasies, like for instance, if we want to disable this payload, we can do disabled dot, and now it's not going to run. Uh, and we don't actually have to move it out of the directory. We can leave it in there, but otherwise we can just, you know, put it here, or if we want to disable it, we can just put it back in the library. So there you go. 
Uh, so that is library, that is loot, that is payloads, and then tools we'll touch on uh, a little bit later, but essentially it's a mechanism that allows you to install additional tools on the device because, you know, remember, this is a full quad-core Linux box. Uh, you've got a root shell at the ready, and it's going to allow you to take advantage of, you know, a, a tons of, I mean, it's Debian-based, so apt install whatever you want, and uh, we provide mechanisms to quickly and easily get started with, say, Metasploit, Responder, Impacket, and Map, um, a lot of your favorites. So the tools directory is just another place that we use to install additional tools if that's what you want to do. All right, so those are modes, attack mode, and arming mode. Those are the directories and the files on the U disk. And uh, and I just want to you know make mention of uh, the fact that in both arming mode and attack mode, if you've configured Wi-Fi, your keycrock is going to be connected to Wi-Fi. And that means if you have it configured for Cloud C2, it'll still be connected to Cloud C2 in both attack mode and in arming mode. Um, and then there's two other interesting bits that I didn't cover yet, and that is in arming mode you can access that root shell that I talked about, and we're gonna do that in the next episode. Uh, and you can access that from serial. And also in attack mode, you can develop your payloads live. So as we get more into this series, we will do interactive payload development. We will interact with the host live. So while right now we're just starting with the baby steps, I'm, I'm just going to show you loading payloads by plugging this into arming mode and copying a file to the USB flash drive. It is possible to actually develop on the machine while it is in attack mode live. So we're going to work towards that uh, either over SSH or over Cloud C2. And that's kind of a, an idea of what's coming up in this series. So wanted to just dial it back give you the fundamentals. If you have any questions on anything uh, that I've touched on in this video, go ahead and leave questions below as well as what you would like to hear about next. I'm going to continue this Keycroc uh, series. So this is Keycroc 102, modes and files. And in the next, we're going to go ahead and get into serial access. Until then, I'm Darren Kitchen. Trust your techno lust. Thanks for supporting Hack5. Find all our shows, community, and Pentest products at hack5.org.